What's woke racism then? Woke racism is that there's a certain kind of woke person who feels that um, it's not only about being leftistly informed, but that there's this basic proposition that we must be primarily focused on overturning power differentials and especially what they call white supremacy, that that must be the focus of intellectual, artistic, and moral endeavor. And if you're not doing that, then you are evil and you should be chased out of the public square. You should lose your job. You should be shamed. That's a kind of woke person. With that kind of person, they're so committed to this basic display that they know what racism is. That's it's become the it's the heartbeat of a religion, very much a religion. That has become so important that even when they do things and stick up for things that hurt black people, they don't pay attention and they don't care because what they really care about is showing that they know racism exists because that shows that they're good people. So it ends up being unintentional, but it is a woke racism. And this book has been written to blow the whistle on it. It seems like there's an inherent connection with virtue signaling that if the reason that mm -hmm. people are prepared to take a narrative over the top of its actual impacts, the reason for that is that they're concerned with how they're signaling to the world at large. I would even put it as the virtue signaling has become a religion instead of just something that people do idly. And it's really scary to see because people will fiercely virtue signal and claim that what they're doing is creating social justice. They're claiming that it's for other people, but they're much less concerned with the other people than they really would be if we hadn't gone from politics to a religion. What do you think is the genesis of this obsession that we've got with race at the moment? Well, it's two things. One is that um, the George Floyd murder was particularly egregious and it happened. And I don't make I don't want this to sound like people were being deliberately cynical, but it happened at a time when America was on lockdown. Everybody was stuck inside. Everybody was lonely and bored and angry. And it was spring. And so I think there was an extent to which people valued the opportunity to go outside to make some noise, to interact with other people. I think if that hadn't happened during the pandemic, it wouldn't have been at such a fever pitch because George Floyd's death was egregious. But unfortunately, we see things like that regularly in the United States. It wasn't that different. But there was that. And then there was also that we have social media now. And so even if there had been a pandemic, I'm trying to be an experimental social scientist, which is not my job. But if there had been a pandemic 10 years ago and everybody had been stuck inside and a man had been killed the way George Floyd was, I don't think that all of this would have happened because there was no Twitter yet or Twitter wasn't as influential. But people can communicate and kind of whip one, on, whip one another up with a speed and a fervor that just technologically wasn't possible until really over the past under 15 years. So combine the pandemic and social media, and you end up in this bizarre new moment where self-involved radicalism is being put forth as the heartbeat of progressivism on race. And we've got to undo that and get back to whatever we were doing before. Just how racist is America at the moment? It's kind of racist. You know, it is um, prescribed to be openly racist to a degree that I think we're beginning to forget how extraordinary it is. And the ordinary educated person examines themselves for personal racist bias. There are societal inequities where black people clearly are behind for reasons that you can't blame on black people themselves. And that's what's called awkwardly societal racism. I don't like that term, but there are racial inequities in this society that often are based on racism in the past. Almost never racism in the present, but they can be what are called legacies of what happened. What are in the some past. examples of those? Well, so for example, if um, black kids are less likely to embrace school, the reason for it is not that black people are dumb, but it's because in the past, when schools were desegregated, white kids and teachers were so hostile against the black kids coming in that a meme developed of thinking of school as the white man's game. That was racism. Now, that same sentiment got passed along as just one way of being a cliquish teenager. And today you'll have a black kid who feels like if I really like school, it's like I'm doing something for other people, not my own people. It's a legacy of racism in the past, but it's not about racism now. That really throws a lot of people. Some One writer has called it racism without racists. And that there's very little room for that in our current discussion. All right. So why do you call woke racism 
or anti-racism a religion? It is a religion because there's a part of it that it's allowed to proceed without addressing logic. There's a part of many religions that entails that you give up logical sequential thinking in favor of suspension of disbelief. That's part of many religions. And when it comes to this modern anti-racism, you are supposed to suspend that disbelief when questions come up that are inconvenient to the general paradigm. And so, for example, if you are a black man in an underserved community, you are in more danger of being killed than, say, I am. Now, if you're going to be killed, the chances that you're killed by a stray white cop are infinitesimal. The chances that you're going to be killed by somebody just like you from six blocks away, if you are going to be killed, are much, much, much higher. Under our debate, we scream to the heavens about the cop and just pay lip service to the fact that there's a problem within black communities themselves. And that's because the religion says you show that you're aware of racism. And so that automatically makes the stray white cop interesting. And it turns your head away from the murders being committed in much greater numbers by people within underserved communities. That's religion. The fact that if you bring that up to people, they get irritated, that there's a belief system that it's incommensurate with. It's religion because, frankly, there's no answer. It's not that somebody like me is missing something. It's simple. Any 10-year-old could figure it out. And yet you're treated, and this is why it's also a religion, you're treated as a heretic for bringing up the question and pushing it. It's a religion because if you don't agree, you're pushed out a window. If it were just an ideology, it would be, I don't like how you're talking about that. That's the way it was, say, 20 years ago. Today, it's if you are against the way I think, you have to leave. You can't work here. You shouldn't teach this course. You should go to another town. That's religion because that is exactly how the fundamentalist Christian used to treat heretics. And so the terminology is different. But people who are woke racists treat people who don't agree with them as if they were heretics. That's exactly the sentiment. And they behave exactly the way prosecutorial Christians behaved in medieval Europe. Exactly. It's not about physical punishment, but the sentiment is the same, including wanting to deprive people of their livelihoods. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full, unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.